What would you do to achieve your dreams? How far would you go? Here are eight people who allegedly sold their soul to the devil himself. Number 8. Christoph Heisman. Johann Christoph Heisman, a painter born in 1651, is said to have sold his soul to the devil after the death of his parents. Heisman accepted to be the devil's earthly son for nine years in exchange for respite from poverty and depression. Heisman's body and soul would then become the property of the devil. Heisman claimed to have signed two agreements, one in ink and the other in blood, verifying the pact. The painter was becoming increasingly concerned as the deadline approached. In 1677, he sought assistance from a Catholic priest who exorcised the young man. Heisman's anxious mind was comforted by the ritual, and he had a vision in which he successfully recovered the bloody covenant. Heisman sought to have the contract, which had been written in ink, annulled soon after. In 1678, he was granted a second exorcism, which helped him relax. After the exorcisms, Heisman continued to paint, producing various works depicting his experiences with the devil. Such artwork depicted Heisman's diabolical visions as detailed in his journal writings. Heisman joined the Brothers Hospitallers of St. John of God near the conclusion of his life. In the year 1700, he passed away. The devil and other demonic beings are supposed to have visited Heisman frequently, attempting to seduce him away from his newfound religion. Number 7. Brigadier General Jonathan Moulton Jonathan Moulton was a famous colonial American soldier who served in both King George's War and the French and Indian War. He was born in 1726. Following his service, he became one of New England's wealthiest men, prompting accusations that he was working with the devil. Rumors circulated that General Moulton had made a financial agreement with Satan in which the devil would visit Moulton's home every month and fill his boot with gold in exchange for eternal devotion and the retention of his soul. Despite such a large sum of money, General Moulton became greedy, cutting a hole in the floor above his cellar, which he covered with his boot, which had a recently punched hole in the heel. Moulton may have believed he was a genius, but one should never try to outsmart the devil. When the devil realized what he was up to, he set fire to Moulton's home, destroying the gold coins in the process. Number 6. Antoine Rose. Antoine Rose, the first female on the roster, was a 15th-century woman who, under duress, admitted to meeting with the devil on a regular basis. She is credited with popularizing the picture of a witch riding a broomstick today. Rose, who became known as the Witch of Savoy, France, claimed to be poor and in desperate need of money. Rose requested help from a neighbor and was led to a group of people who persuaded her to seek assistance from the devil. The devil appeared and agreed to help the struggling woman as long as she refused to worship God and instead worshipped him. A foot and a half stick and a little jar of ointment were also given to her by the devil. She was supposed to apply some ointment on the stick, lay it between her legs, and exclaim, Go! in the name of the devil, go. Rose revealed some of the followers' offerings to the devil in her confession, including dancing and feasting, as well as kissing the devil's hindquarters when he came in the physical shape of a giant black dog. Rose also claimed that the devil had a deep, raspy voice when he was human, and that the first time they met, she was afraid of him. Number 5. Saint Theophilus of Adana. Many consider Saint Theophilus of Adana, also known as Saint Theophilus the Penitent, to be the first person to sell his soul to the devil for social or political success. According to legend, in the 6th century, Theophilus was unanimously elected bishop. Because of his modesty, he declined the offer. The position was filled by another individual, who soon made Theophilus' life a living hell. Theophilus contacted a sorcerer to assist him in contacting the devil, regretting his decision. The devil was more than willing to make things right, as long as the cleric signed a contract in which he renounced Christ and the Virgin Mary. Theophilus agreed to the requests, signed the deal, and was promoted to the position he had been offered. However, skepticism crept in as the years passed. Theophilus pleaded with the Virgin Mary for pardon. 
he fasted for forty days, during which time the virgin is said to have come and scolded him, Theophilus appealed for compassion, and she promised to speak to God on his behalf. The Virgin Mary returned with the message that God had forgiven Theophilus after he had fasted for another thirty days. Theophilus, on the other hand, awoke three days later to see the bloody contract on his chest. Satan clung to the cleric's soul and refused to let go. A horrified Theophilus sought advice from another bishop, who destroyed the contract, freeing him from the dreadful pact. Theophilus died on the spot, overcome with joy and relief at having been set free. Number 4. Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson was an early 20th-century American bluesman whose musical prowess was allegedly earned through a midnight deal with the devil. Johnson, a Mississippi Delta native, was born in 1911. He aspired to musical glory as a young man, and one night he took his guitar to a crossroads in the hopes of summoning evil powers. Johnson's guitar was taken by the devil, who performed a few songs before returning it to the young artist, providing him total command of the instrument. As a result of this incident, rumors circulated that Johnson's drooping eye indicated an infernal link, and that he turned away from his audience when performing to conceal the presence of evil. Johnson, who was 27 years old at the time, died in 1938 under unknown circumstances. Some believe he died of syphilis, while others believe he was poisoned by the devil. Number 3. Niccolo Paganini. Niccolo Paganini, a legendary violinist was accused of bartering with the devil in exchange for musical prowess about 150 years before Johnson's nocturnal contract. He was born in 1782. At the age of 12, the virtuoso began performing in front of an audience, only to collapse under the strain four years later. At the age of 22, he returned to the music world, presenting complicated arrangements of his own creation. Paganini was the only person living who could properly play several of the tunes since they were so difficult. As knowledge of his talent grew, rumors that his talents were the consequence of an evil pact spread as well. Some even claimed to have seen Satan on stage with Paganini during concerts, aiding the musician. Paganini was refused final rites and a dignified burial after his death because of these allegations. His body was finally placed to rest in a cemetery in Parma, Italy, 36 years after his death, a long distance from his home in Genoa. Number 2. Giuseppe Tartini. Another Italian violinist who is alleged to have made a pact with the devil is Giuseppe Tartini. According to folklore, one night in 1713, Tartini was visited by a dark apparition in a dream. In exchange for the musician's soul, the devil offered his services. The devil picked up his violin and performed the most exquisite melody after Tartini accepted the bargain. Tartini snatched up his instrument and attempted to replicate the music as soon as he awoke. The Devil's Trill Sonata was born, and it is still considered one of the most difficult pieces of violin music ever created. Those who saw Tartini execute the piece thought he must have received unholy assistance. The composition, on the other hand, never satisfied Tartini. He insisted that it couldn't compare to the evil man from his dream who played the original melody. And finally, number one. A bon grandeur. Grandia is unique among the souls on this list in that his putative contract with the devil is real. Grandia, a French Catholic priest born in 1590, was notorious for his sexual promiscuity with a number of nuns. He was also a vocal opponent of the church's celibacy policy. Several of Grandier's previous bedmates accused the priest of witchcraft, claiming he utilized dark magic to lure them. A trial was held, but the defendant was acquitted. Cardinal Richelieu, France's top minister, was not a favorite of Grandier, and the priest had published a number of harsh attacks against him. As a result, Richelieu decided to hold a new trial. During his interrogation, Grandier was detained and subjected to torture. However, the most damning evidence was supposedly discovered among Grandier's things in the form of a document. Grandier's signature, as well as the signatures of other demons, including Satan himself, were on the contract, which was written in Latin and covered with weird symbols. 
In exchange for the priest's allegiance, Grandia was promised the love of women, the blossom of virgins, the respect of monarchs, honors, lusts, and powers. It's unknown whether Grandia was coerced into signing the document or if it was faked by those who wanted him dead. Grandia was convicted of fraternizing with Satan and sentenced to death in either case. In 1634, he was burned at the stake. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like it, please support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and tapping the bell icon so you will receive notifications when we upload again. Thank you.